we're in the middle of a pandemic here. A lot of free time on your hands. You're back in your hometown. What sort of things outside of football are you up to? Um, I mean, really, other than working out, there's really not too much to do. I mean, all, every, kind of everything shut down, closed. So it's really just kind of been spending time with family and, and, and close friends, but, uh, but still trying to distance myself from, from a group or larger groups of people because, I mean, I'm not trying to get sick either. You gotten back to Del Valle at all? Um, I haven't, actually. I haven't. I think Del Valle shut down as well. So we've just been trying to find places to throw at that are that are kind of just tucked away and nobody give us any trouble about it and, and uh, just try to get that working any way we can. And five years ago, you were a student at Del Valle. I mean, you had no idea probably that you were gonna go this far. Maybe did you, I, I don't know. But looking back to your time as a high school quarterback, did you ever imagine that you would one day be playing in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I had, al I had always dreamed ever since I was an extremely young kid before I played football that I've, that I've always had aspirations of being in the NFL and, and being a starting quarterback and playing playing professional football and so for me it was just it was just all about if you can put the amount of work in that is necessary to get to that level then you'll make it eventually and so just I just kept working kept working kept working high school college and then now eventually the uh, the, the pros and being with the Redskins I mean it's truly it's truly one of the best opportunities that has ever been put in front of me and I'm extremely grateful for it I mean I've always kind of visualized myself in this position I'm looking back at some old high school tape of you mm -hmm. at Del Valle, and you're leaps and bounds ahead of some of these defenses there, taking off, yeah. running like a gazelle down the yeah. field. What are some of your best memories as a conquistador? Man, I think winning area, beating Paulo Duro in area, and going, getting the opportunity to play Alito regionals. I think that was that was one of my good memories. Beating Chapin my senior year for by district, that was a great memory. I mean, I've had so many, I've had so many great memories at, at Del Valle that it's. It's hard to just kind of count them all down. I mean, I've had it just. I think I think high school football. I, I I stick by it. I think high school football was one of the funnest times football-wise that I've ever had. You played in so many games, then obviously in college, and you will play in more moving forward. But are those memories at Del Valle? Are they still very clear in your head? Oh, very clear, very clear. It, it feels like they were yesterday that I was sitting in the locker room with with dudes like Gumby and Eddie Moreno and Jalen Golden and Yanni and just all these teammates that I had just playing in high school with and all these friendships that that just just we had bonds over time I mean they're just they'll just they'll live on forever for me and then getting to Colorado obviously in a power five conference in the Pac-12 you redshirted your freshman year what was the transition like going from El Paso to Boulder um it's a little bit different kind of a culture shock um, especially coming from a place where it's majority Hispanic here or Latino so I mean going up to Boulder it's 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 a little bit a little bit more white Caucasian, but the the scenery is beautiful in Boulder. I loved every second I was there. Um, but I mean, I mean, my hometown is still El Paso, Texas. How do you describe El Paso to people who aren't from the area, or about people back at Colorado, or people you know down the road, maybe not who aren't from the area? I think the first thing I say is probably it's 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 a desert for sure. You got to know what you're walking into. It's for sure a desert, but surrounded by great people. The community is it's it's. Just extremely loving, extremely just welcoming. Um, I mean, there's so much great food here, so much great food. I think that's the, probably the second thing that I say when I'm describing El Paso is the amount of great food, hole in the wall places. Mexican food here is amazing, it's off the charts. So I mean, just, I think it's just all about the atmosphere and it's all about the people from El Paso that, that, that makes El Paso really special. And you were sort of baptized by fire at Colorado, your red shirt of freshman season. Buffaloes were having a great season, and then in you step, two years removed from playing high school football here in El Paso. Uh, do you think that helped prepare you now moving forward, sort of that quick entry mantra there? I think my redshirt year is probably the biggest thing that prepared me for, for playing big time Division I college football, just because it gives you an entire year to prepare, to get accustomed to how college classes are, because college and high school are two different things. And, uh, and it also gives you an entire year to learn the playbook and get it down and make sure that you know the reads and you know what reads versus what coverage is. And you start learning a lot more about protections and about run schemes and they they're feel more comfortable giving you more checks and stuff. So I think the redshirt year was, even though, even though the redshirt year was not fun, it was not a fun year for me, but it was probably the best thing for me in the long run. Going from that redshirt season, leaving Colorado, a Pac-12 school as the school's all-time leading passer. When you see your name in those record books moving forward, a kid from El Paso, what does that mean to you? Um, I mean, I think it's just a testament to how much work I put into this, into this game. I mean, I love this game. I, I put a ton of work in it. I work every day at being a better quarterback, being a better me. And, uh, 
And I think the records just kind of just kind of showed and proved that I that I've been working my butt off for four and a half years. Um, and even before that, even in high school, I mean, I, I was working like crazy. I mean, I remember in basketball season because I, I played basketball. I also ran track at Del Valle. But before basketball games on Tuesdays, me and my dad would show up in the weight room at six in the morning before class started and get a full lift in before the game. So it was always just about the process for us and just just knowing that if you want to be great and you want to be someone who is has the chance to potentially have those records and get and win games and be one of the greats that you got to put the work in no matter no matter what season it is people after you graduated from Colorado their, their question marks about you were consistency oh Steven Montez you know he's not as consistent you know on third down or something like that and the winning records weren't necessarily there what's your response to that I mean I, I think football football is a game of inches and sometimes we did fall short but I don't think it was ever from a lack of effort I think it, it was always we were given 110 percent every single play every single drive that we had and I mean sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way and I mean that's just that's just how competitive sports are and the coaching staffs obviously you and I were just talking about it there was a lot of turnover in the coaching staffs mm -hmm. throughout your time there how did that make an impact on you sort of switching playbooks and learning on the fly yeah I mean I, I the way that I looked at it was every single coach that stepped into that meeting room had something different to bring to the table. So I, w I always wanted to go into that meeting room and learn as much as I could from whether it was Brian Lindgren, whether it was Kurt Roper, whether it was Jay Johnson. Every single, every single one of those quarterback coaches had something different and something new that they wanted to emphasize. And I think in turn that made me a better football player and it also helped me pick up offenses at a quicker rate than I would have been if I would have just had one offense for four years. What's your biggest strength as a quarterback? I mean, I think my arm strength. I think my arm strength is second to none. Saw a quote from you saying that you thought your arm was the strongest of any quarterback in the draft. Do you stand by that? Oh, absolutely. Why do you say that? I mean, I've, I've thrown with a lot of these quarterbacks. And I mean, not, that's not to say that a lot of these quarterbacks aren't talented. They are very talented. These dudes, Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow, talented guys, very talented guys. But I, I still don't think that there's a that there's a quarterback in the draft that had a stronger arm than I did. And working out before the draft, you trained with Jordan Palmer, former UTEP quarterback, quarterback guru, a guy who's worked with Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson. Absolutely. Who were the kind of guys that you worked out with with Jordan in the offseason? We trained with, it was, the guys who were in the draft were me, Joe Burrow, and Cole McDonald. And then the NFL guys who came back and trained with Jordan were Josh Allen, Kyle Allen, Sam Darnold, and I want to say that that's it. And you guys are, just because this is what, from what I read, it kind of feels like a frat house on the beach or something like that. What's that? It's like a I mean, club of quarterbacks, if yeah, you will. Yeah. yeah, no, it 100% is a club of quarterbacks, and it's a safe space where quarterbacks can ask any questions about anything. And, I mean, we all kind of have, obviously, our, our experiences differ depending on where you are or how many games you want or whatever. But for the most part, I mean, as a quarterback, we all kind of have similar questions. And we all kind of wonder similar things. And Jordan has kind of just been that mentor for all of us because he's also lived through a lot of the experiences that we're probably going to face in the future. So, I mean, it was, just, it was just a great space to go and develop as a person, develop as a player, and just have fun around guys that are just great dudes. Was there a point of, like, enlightenment working with Jordan at all? I mean, because a lot of people talk about him being a quarterback whisperer. Was there anything that he did that took your game, you think, to the next level? I mean, I think just, just the way that he prepares and the way that he trains and the way, just everything about him is just, it's extremely honest and it's, it's just, it's unique. He's a very unique guy and I really, I've got a lot of love for Jordan, ton of love for Jordan. He's, I mean, he was actually a UTEP guy. So we kind of had that connection when I was going up there to start, to start training with him. He knew about El Paso, he knew about like Saragossa Road and all that stuff. So, I mean, it was just it was it was just a lot of fun. And I mean, he's he's definitely he he's legit. He's I think he's the best of the best when it comes to quarterback coaches. The best you, of the best. You beat me to the punch there because Jordan obviously played here at UTEP, and you probably watched him growing up a little bit. Did yeah. you guys have that bond together as have it both having that El Paso connection? What, yeah. what was that like? Because he's he has a ton of love for the 915, the 91 nickel is what he calls it. So I mean. He's got, he's got a ton of love for El Paso and just, just kind of seeing that from him just, I mean, it made me just have a stronger connection to him because, I mean, I love El Paso as well. And so I think that's just something that just brought us closer amongst other things as well. But I think just having that common ground of we both, 
we both kind of came from El Paso a little bit, and, and we both loved the 915. I think that was definitely a great point to start. And then moving to the draft, the pre-draft process, working with Jordan, obviously your college accolades, your arm strength, all of that together, did you feel as though you would be drafted in seven rounds? I thought I was going to. I honestly did. I thought I was going to. But, I mean, sometimes things happen for a reason, and sometimes it's – there's, there's challenges that, that you need to overcome in order to achieve the goals and dreams that you want to achieve. You see the stories of quarterbacks who get drafted late or don't get drafted at all mm -hmm. and go on to have success in the NFL. Do you use that as motivation, I, I guess? Yeah, absolutely, because I mean, I still, I still have a huge chip on my shoulder because I still feel like I have everything to prove. And I mean, I think, I think that's the way that I, want, I really want to keep it is I've, I've got this great opportunity in front of me. It doesn't matter where you get drafted. It matters what you do after that draft process that really makes dudes special. Like Tom Brady's a perfect example. He's 199th pick. Look at him now. He's the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. Six-time Super Bowl champion. Getting into the fifth, sixth, seventh rounds, obviously teams that you'd worked out for in the pre-draft process. Coming and going without hearing your name called. Do you remember those teams that that maybe passed on you that could have had, had an do. opportunity? I do, for sure. There was definitely some teams that, that picked up a quarterback late in the seventh round. But I mean, all that, all that's in the past now. It doesn't matter who, who they could have picked up or who they did pick up. All that matters now is that I'm with the Washington Redskins and I honestly couldn't be happier. When did they pick up the phone and give you the, your first call? It was, about, it was about mid to the end of the sixth round. They, they uh, called me up and they said, hey, we're, we're pushing. We got a couple picks in the seventh round. We're pushing for you to, to pick you up in, in, the, in the draft. But uh, if you don't end up getting drafted, we want you as a free agent. <clears throat> and so right then and there, I was like, all right, if I don't get drafted, if I don't get drafted, I'm 100% Washington Redskins. I'm excited about it. And uh, so the draft ended up going, sixth round ended, seventh round ended. They called me back and they said, hey, sorry you didn't get drafted, but we really want you here in Washington. And so I said, man, I can't, I can't wait to be a Washington Redskins. I'm so excited. Have they told you anything about what your role is going to be in Washington? I mean, going in, they already have quarterbacks who are established. I know Dwayne Haskins and, uh, and Kyle Allen they just got, and they also have Alex Smith. Um, but, I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm going in there to compete. And, I mean, that's, that's just my mentality. That's always been my mentality, whether it was high school, whether it was college, whether it was the NFL now. I think that you have to go in there with that mentality to go and compete just to, just to play at your best form. I think if you go in there thinking, oh, man, I'm never going to play and I'm never going to get reps and this and that, you start to feel sorry for yourself and, and you don't play at your peak potential. Despite not getting drafted, you're an NFL quarterback. I mean, that's something to be said coming here from oh, El Paso. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And just, just the opportunity to play in the NFL alone is something that, I was, that I've always dreamed about and something that I've always wanted to do. And, and just to have that opportunity, I mean, very few people get to play a, like a sport for a living. So, I mean, I just feel extremely blessed to be in this position and to be in the position to, uh, to inspire kids from El Paso to go chase their dreams and to, to go do what they want to do, whether it's sports related or whether it's football related, whether it's basketball related, just anything. You have a dream to be a, an astronaut for NASA, I mean, you work hard enough, you can go do it. You can go catch your dreams. And that's just, that's, that's what I'm trying to push. You're from a part of the country that isn't necessarily a hotbed for NFL quarterbacks, if you will. It's not mm -hmm. like you're from you know, California or you know, the Dallas area or something like that. Yeah. Is that put a chip on your shoulder at all now getting into an NFL quarterback? Or yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to help put El Paso on the map like, like guys like Aaron Jones, like Alvin, dudes that have, dudes that have come here and, and put their stamp kind of on the college football world. I'm trying to do that same thing, and I'm trying to open it up to where other quarterbacks in El Paso can get the same opportunity that I did to go out and play top-level Division I football and, and eventually try to get up to the NFL level if they, if they work hard enough and they, uh, they put the time in. Back here now in El Paso, you're going out to high school stadiums, throwing passes to UTEP wide receivers, mm -hmm. guys who have graduated from other schools across the area, all with a one common denominator, yep. being they're from El Paso. Yep. How cool is that, getting out to a field and lining up seven on seven, and every single player there might play for a different team, but they come under one city? It's awesome, man. It's awesome just because everybody has so much love for El Paso. And I think that's what kind of brings us all together and makes it all good, and we're all, we're all extremely friendly and welcoming at the end of the day because we all know that we're we're in this trying to get work, trying to get better, trying to improve not only ourselves but each other, and uh, and that we're we're all brought together by like that like you said that one common denominator, the 915. I mean, I, it's just it's really something special. What's your goal long term in the NFL? Long term, I mean, I want to be I want to be a Super Bowl champion, Hall of Famer. I mean, I think that's that's any kid growing up. That's our dream. I want to be I want to be in the likes of the Tom Brady's, the Joe Montana's, the Joe Namath's. 
dudes that have done this at a high level and have and have won Super Bowl rings. I think that's 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 what everybody's goal is if you want to if you want to be great. So I mean that's that's uh that's what my goal is right now, but it's going to take a lot more time and a lot more work to get there. And I understand and I know that. And what's going to separate you from all the other quarterbacks in the NFL, the guys that you worked with pre-draft, the guys that you played against in college, in high school, the guys in your current quarterback room? What's your separation? I think it's got to be work ethic. It has to be. I mean, I think you got to go in there and put more time than anybody else is putting into the craft. And you got to go in there with just a different mentality. And I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited to just go out there and, and get back to football. I know we kind of everyone's been sitting around and, and training and throwing routes on air and stuff. I'm, I'm ready to get back to real football, put the pads on, put the helmet on, and, and strap it up, and, and let's see. And let's roll. I can't wait. But with the team name, who do you tell people you play for? I mean, you're going to have pads on, or you're going to have the helmet on. Right now, obviously, in limbo, but who do you play for right now? Do you, who do you tell people? Right now, I play, I mean, the Washington Redskins is who I play for. But I mean, that team name obviously is going to get retired, and the logo is going to get retired. They already announced that. But as far as what they should be named, I really don't think all that matters. You put any team name on the front of that jersey, the game is still the same. And internally, any person in specific person that you play for? I mean, I play for my family. I play for my, my mom, my dad, my brother Raymond. I play for, I play for our last name, Montez last name, Montes. Um, and I play for the city of El Paso. Just like I said, I mean, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to inspire people. I'm trying to create opportunity. I'm trying to put 915 on the map for when it comes to the talent hotbed.